means page number. Thank you. Thank you. Sivya, and who is 
born and brought up in the jungle. She comes from a poorer segment of the society and living in the jungle, she is known to the ways of the jungle. How? No, with her everyday bravery, where people say, you know, people don't always stay in very uh, comfortable places. We have people staying in the deserts, right? We have also people staying in wildernesses, that is in the jungles. But they say, how are they? If we be able to go and stay there, or not? You have a problem sitting there. But when they are there, they are used to the climate of the desert. They are used to the scarcity of water. And they know how to adapt themselves to it. So the people who live in the jungles, they know how to stay in the jungles, how to evade the uh, wild animals and how to lead their life every day courage and bravery. For them it's not courage at all. For us it is. Okay, if we have to come across a wild animal, the way we will react will be much different from way we will react. So this Sivya, she um, is a young girl that she is. Uh, she is used to very hard work and toil. And because she is poor, and but she wants to have a blue bead. A girl that she is, she wants to have jewelry and everything, but she cannot afford it. So she wants to have one jewelry, blue bead. The story is how she ultimately gets that blue bead. Okay, shall we start? <coughs> From deep water came the crocodile. Out of the black water, curved with whirlpools and into the frill of gold shallows by the stepping stones. Since it's description, you will have to transport yourself to the description. Why is the description given? So that you are able to take yourself there. So where are we going to? <coughs> Jungle. And right now where has the author introduced us to? Right. Okay, there is a river, so you have to imagine, place yourself that you are near a river bank. Okay, and the water is deep, this deep water. And what's the color of the water? Black. 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 And curved with whirlpools. You know what a whirlpool is? Okay, what is a whirlpool? It is the a vortex. In, yeah, vortex in the water is called a whirlpool. And into the frill of gold shadows. What do you mean by gold shadows? The shallow water is in the sun. Yes, yes. The, so the shallow is what? You are very close. The top part. The surface of the surface. So what do you say? The sandbags. Okay. The sandbag is the. So just the sand, the water on the sand, no? And you are able to see the sand under the water. So what does it appear to be? It appears to be this gold shadows. Right? Because the water and the sunlight will fall on the bank and you will be able to see the. So the water seems like gold. Now this frill. Yes. Frill of gold shadows. Frill is just fringe. Means the beginning part of it. Right? So if this is the water, suppose this is the uh, river and this is the banks. This part is the frills. Okay, here will be the sand. Here it's going to become deep. Then you will not be able to see the banks. It's just when the water just starts, there this is the frills. So, so you will have the little waves here. Okay, so that is the frills of gold shallows by the stepping stones. So what are stepping stones? Yes, suppose this is one river bank. This is the other side of the river bank. And sometimes when in these uh, uh, rivers, no, of the, the jungles, not all of them are very deep. So sometimes to cross the river, you have these big boulders or stones. Okay. So these are the steppings. When they have to go, they cross, they step on this and then they step on this. There will be smaller ones like this. If you have been through a jungle path, you would have seen one of these streams that are there. Okay, so these are called the stepping stones. So you have to transport yourself over here. Okay. This is the man. This is the best I can draw. Okay. So you have to be here. And we are talking about the water over here. This is the river. And there is one crocodile here.
just imagine that. He was twice the length of a tall man. Who was twice the length of a Yes. And inside him, among the stones which he had swallowed to aid digestion, rolled a silver bracelet. So, what do they have to aid their digestion? Stones. And how does it aid in digestion? Right. They crush the food. The stones they crush past each other, isn't it? There's uh, friction and in that process what happens the food gets broken down into smaller pieces and so otherwise what happens they mostly swallow they don't sit and bite and chew so the stones they swallow so that it aids in digestion but sometimes it might have so happened he has swallowed a bracelet and the bracelet was still in its stomach Timber was being floated down this great Indian river from forests further up, and there were sleepers lying stuck around the stones until someone came to dislodge them and send them on their way, or until floods lifted them and jostled them along. The crocodile had no need to hide himself. He came to rest in the glassy shadows among logs and balanced there on tiptoe on a ripple sand. But only his raised eyes out of the water and raised nostrils breathing the clean, sunny air. Okay. So now that you are here, what is it saying? Timber was being floated. What happens in these jungles and forests? They cut wood, right? When they cut wood, sometimes these forests are very dense. They are not able to transport the log. So what do they do to the log? They float them in the have you, do you remember the lumberjacks of Canada? Which you have done before? Suppose this is the river. What do they do? Higher up, they cut the logs and they place it in the water. What happens with the flow of the water? The log will move downstream. And maybe there is a factory here, and they, the loggers, will take out, take out the logs from here and take it to the factories. So they don't have to move it through the jungle. So they cut the timber and they place it on the waters of the river. When the river is in floods, that's when the log is lifted and it is flown. That's how the transformation takes place. So the river had these logs which were kept in it and there were sleepers. Sleepers means like these logs which are placed side by side. Uh, yes. And there were sleepers lying stuck around the stones and then someone came to dislodge them. Now there are stones also lying over so if there is a log here, what would happen to the wood? See, it be able to move? No. It would get stuck. So then what, then a person would have to come and with a stick, they would be just, you know, jostling them, moving them, trying to dislodge them from each other and pushing them over the stones. Okay, that is how the logs would move. Uh, so, um, either came to dislodge them and send them on their way, or until floods lifted them and jostled them. <coughs> or else floods would lift them over the stones and it would flow. Two ways the timber, if it got stuck between the stones, that is how they would be moved down. The crocodile had no need to hide himself. He came to rest. You know, crocodiles are now in this water, the water is dark, right? So, they know how to camouflage. It is not easy to see them in, the, in this water or in the glassy shadows. And with wood, you know, floating around them, it's even more difficult to find. It's even more difficult to locate the crocodile. So the crocodile did not need to actually hide himself, just lay in the water, in the glassy shadows. And balance there on tiptoe on the ripple sand. With only his rays. So, how good is he lying with only the eyes? Have you seen crocodiles? If you have seen any wildlife uh, short movies or documentaries, what they do is they just keep their head a little higher so that the nostril is out and they can breathe. The rest of the body is under. Okay, so there was this crocodile over here at the edge of this river with just its nostrils and its eyes up and the rest everything was underwater and it was pretty camouflaged so people the others couldn't see the are you all there at that place 
Now, so this was a description of what children? Yes, so this is the setting. Whenever there's a story, the story starts with a setting. This is the setting where we transport the readers to that setting. If I talk about uh, Amazon Basin, you cannot transport yourself to Sahara Desert, no? So like that, you have to know where you are when you're reading a story. So now here we are beside this river, which has this crocodile. Now we come to the description of the crocodile. Around him, gold shadows is Around him, broad sparkling water travels between cliffs and grass and forested hills. A jungle track came out of scrub each side and down to the sun whitened stepping stones, on which a little flycatcher was flirting and trilling along. The mother crocodile, blackish brown above and yellowy white under, emotionless. Able to wait forever till food came. This antediluvian saurian, this prehistoric juggernaut, ferocious and formidable, a vast force in the water, propelled by the unimaginable and irresistible power of the huge tail, he lapped by ripples a throb in his throat. His mouth, running almost the whole length of his head, was closed and fixed in that evil bony smile, and when the yellow underside came up to it, it was tinged with green. <clears throat> okay, so you see this whole big paragraph is a description of the So around him sparkling water. Sparkling water means shiny, clear water, sparkling water. Travel between cliffs and grass and forested hills. So what we have along there was there's a cliff here. Okay. Be a cliff here. There would be forests here. Please do not mind my drawing. Just imagine at the end. Okay. So there are forest hills. There is a cliff on one side, and through that the river is running. Okay. A jungle track came out of scrub each side. So a jungle track was there. What do you mean by a jungle trap? A path. A path made by? Nature. Uh, by nature. When one keeps traveling through a beaten path, then what happens naturally? A trail is made. And people keep walking on that trail again and again, so it forms a path. It's not actually made a proper for the path, but it's just every day, maybe the cattle go or the people walk, and then that's how a path is there. That's called a forest path. So like that, from the scrubland, there is this path which led from each side of the river. <coughs> a jungle track down to the sun, whitened stepping stones on which a little fly catcher. What's a fly catcher? Venus flytrap. No, that, that, that's a picture plant. And no, a fly catcher was trilling. No, fly catcher is a bird. Okay, fly catcher. Was flirting and trilling. Trilling means singing. Yeah. Light catchers. Trilling. <coughs> the mother crocodile, blackish brown above and yellowy white. What's a mother crocodile? Yes. A big crocodile. Big, big crocodile. crocodile. Yeah, but, uh, there are different types of crocodiles. So yeah, there are different species of crocodiles. Mother crocodile is one type of a crocodile. Okay. Just like we have this gharyas. Gharyas is long one snout. long snout. Yes, that one snout. That's a gharya. So that is another type of a crocodile. So this is one mother crocodile is a type of a And what was its color? It was blackish brown above. See, blackish brown. How it could camouflage itself? The water was black and the logs were brown. Right? So it was blackish brown above and yellowy white under. The water under it was sand, no? Which could be seen. So the underwater, the belly also couldn't be seen much because that was yellowy white. 
so it camouflaged well with the sand under the water uh, they motion this able to wait forever till food came you know these crocodiles what they can do very patient they are endlessly they can wait in one place without moving crocodiles move what will happen they will be ripples in the water isn't it they are huge creatures even if they move a little the water will ripple and people like the prey would come to know that the crocodile is there so they have this patience of you know being there while they motionless for a very long time till the prey Uh, this antediluvian saurian. What is antediluvian? Antediluvian saurian means an old-fashioned, very old type. It's called antediluvian saurian, belonging to prehistoric times. And saurian is lizard-like. Okay, so antediluvian is. Fashion and Saurian means of the lizard family. Antediluvian Saurian. This prehistoric juggernaut. Jogonaut means huge and powerful. Jogonaut is huge and So the Santidiluvian Saurian, this prehistoric juggernaut, ferocious and formidable. Ferocious means? Angry. Yes, it comes from the word? Angry. Fierce. Fierce. So comes from fierceness comes ferocious. Okay. Ferocity. So it was fierce and formidable. Formidable means that when something presents a threat, that's called formidable. So, so we can imagine that this crocodile was a massive, fierce creature laying in wait silently for its Okay. A vast force in water propelled by the unimaginable and irresistible power of the huge tail. So where did the force lie? In his tail. If a crocodile moves, it's mostly with its tail with one swish. It is how it attacks its prey. Okay. That's how it you know raises the water of the river or wherever it is. So fierce is and so much force is there in its tail. So it is irresistible and unimaginable force. And so with this huge tail, it lay lapped by ripples, a throb in his throat. So there was something which was stuck in his throat. It was a throb in his throat. His mouth running almost the whole length of his head. Now imagine a crocodile's face. What is the jaw like? Like this, isn't it? Running till the entire length of the face. If the face of the crocodile is this, the jaw is also this. The eyes are here. And the entire thing is the jaw. Running till the entire face is the jaw. The mouth running almost the whole length of his head. So, our mouth is only from ear to ear, no? It's not from ear to ear like the joker. Joker is ears to ear. We have a normal from ear to ear. But imagine for the crocodile, if the face is this, then the jaw is from ear to ear. Right? 
His mouth running almost the whole length of his head was closed and fixed at an evil, bony smile. So that you have to imagine this uh, is uh, the imagination of the director that when it closes its eyes, it seemed as if it had a bony, evil smile only because the animal was a ferocious one. And when the yellow on his side came up to it, it was tinged to red. Okay. So you would have to be learning this. Description. Then I ask you describe the problem. So then you and this thing you have to learn it by heart. Okay. From the day, perhaps should I do the reading or you are going to do the reading? Okay. From the day, perhaps a hundred years ago, when the stag had hatched him in a pack. And he had broken his shell, he got his head out and looked around, ready to snap at anything before he was even fully hatched. From that day, when he had at once made for the water, ready to fend for himself immediately, he had lived by his brainless craft and ferocity, escaping the birds of prey and the great carnivorous fishes that eat baby crocodiles, he had prospered catching all the he needed and storing it till putrid, putrid in holes in the back, temperate water to live in, and plenty of rotted to give to the great length. Okay, so now we are going back a little to where he started off or how he was born and how he did to what he did to survive. So, from the day perhaps a hundred years ago, so what would be the age of the crocodile? About hundred years. When the sun had hatched him in a sandbag, so what had hatched him? It was the warmth of the sun. The parents were not there. They had abandoned this uh, egg and gone off. And so it was the sun which had provided the warmth and it had hatched by himself. And he had broken his shell and got his head out and looked around, ready to snap at anything even before he was fully hatched. So even before... So what is it trying to tell you? It was forever a hungry one. Okay. So even before it was able to come up fully from its shell, it started snapping its mouth to get food. Right. And ready to snap from that day when he had at once made for the water, ready to fend for himself. What do you mean by fend for himself? Look after himself. Look after his food. Okay. Look to getting food because there was nobody to get him food for himself, for him. So what would he have to depend upon? He had to depend upon himself to take care of himself and this. Okay. Depend for, so depend means. Depend for means. Look after oneself. Uh, ready to fend for himself immediately. He had lived by his brainless craft and ferocity. What do you mean by brainless craft? What? How? You don't know the brains, yes. So either you be intelligent or you have to know the ways. Right? You have to be crafty. Crafty means sly. So he was not a very intelligent kind of a fellow. He lived by his ferocity. He was able to threaten. He was able to know how to get his prey. So either you be smart or you be street smart. So this fellow was street smart. Okay. So he lived by his brainless craft and ferocity. And what did he do? Imagine, see, nobody taught him how to look after himself. He had to do it all by himself. So he found out ways how he could escape the birds of prey. The crocodile did not become this in one day. The crocodile must have been this much only. A little by little it grew to this length. But when it was this much, what did it have to do? It had to take care that it was not eaten up by the birds of prey. Eagles and all who swore down, you know, they come down and they catch these small fishes, crocodiles, babies, whatever they can. So it had to find a way to escape those birds of prey. And 
that great carnivorous fishes that eat baby crocodiles. So there was danger from the sky. There was danger from water as well because there would be these big fishes which would come and eat baby crocodiles. Imagine they have the lizard family. You know how the lizards look like? Have you seen a baby lizard before? Me, this much very vulnerable small little thing. Okay, so baby crocodile was not as small as a lizard, but then okay, it was enough. This much. Yes, as you know. Right, so the big fishes can come and eat the big fishes. <clears throat> okay, fishes that he really had prospered, catching all the food he needed. So he not only found food for himself, he made sure that he was not the food of the others. And catching all the food he needed and storing it till putrid. Putrid means putrid means rotten. Okay, putrid means. Right. Uh, in holes in the pan. So sometimes baby crocodile, no? maybe it would catch a prey, it would not be able to eat it full. So what would it do? It would go and store it and it would make some holes and store that food over there till it became rotten and then perhaps you would have it. Okay, tepid water to live in and plenty of rotted food drew him to this great leg. What's tepid water? Not calm. You okay, paint. You have it right if you have gargle, then you have salty it. water. Uh, what is more we add the salt to what kind of water? Lukewarm. Very good. Lukewarm water. Tepid water means lukewarm So living in this tepid water and, uh, and eating the started food is what you have to this great okay. So we have a little flashback into his life and how it came to be this big force. Okay, anybody else wants to read? Okay. Now nothing but yours, the inch thick common height, not even rifle bullets, which would have gone soft. Only the eyes and soft underarms offered a place. He lived well in the river, sunning himself sometimes with other crocodiles, muggers, as well as long snorted fish eating kayaks on warm rocks and sandbanks, where the sun dried the clay on them quite white, and where they could drop off into the water in a big moment, uh, in a moment if a night. Now, as we know that uh, crocodiles, they have scales on the body, right? They have these thick armored hide. So, the big scales and they are so thick that even the bullets can have no effect on it. If you shoot it on the scale, what is what the bullet going to do? It's going to bounce off. Okay, it is so thick, the high, the armored hide is, that the bullets are going to bounce off. So that's not a way. So what is the soft place of this crocodile stomach? Stomach. The vulnerable stomach places. Stomach. The vulnerable stomach and eyes where there are where the skin is exposed. Okay, there are muscles. There is no armored hide. There are no scales. So only these two spaces were the soft spots where if you could target the crocodile there, then the and then the crocodile would be killed. Otherwise, just looking at the crocodile, if you shoot at a distance on its scale, on the upper side, it's going to have no effect. <clears throat> so he lived well in the river, sunning himself sometimes with other crocodiles. Sunning himself, you know, children, is coming out nearer to the shore because here the water is shallow. So it would just come near to the sunbanks and would, you know, be under this shallow water and the sun's uh, rays would fall on it and that's how they would sun themselves. With the other crocodiles, and who were the other crocodiles in that river? There were other mothers as well as these long snouted kayaks. And they were in such a place that if they felt that they were threatened, what could they just do? 
Lock back into the water. Just quickly jump back into the So they were in that, they were safely sitting in that position. Everybody else? Okay. I think we should all go. First, I'll do as per your wish, then everybody can. So, the, big crocodile, the, big, the big crocodile fed mostly on the fish, but also on deer and monkeys that came to drink. So rats and duck out too. But sometimes he had fall. He fed on a pea dog, I a pie dog, full of parasites or a skeleton dog. And sometimes he went down to the burning huts and found the half burned bodies of Indians cast into the street. What does it mean? Which one? Burning huts. Burning huts? Yeah. Burning huts. Just burning huts. Burning huts. Cards. Are they question cards? Uh, no, no. Question card is not right. Yeah, yeah, the card is a river bank. Yeah, it's a river bank. See, it's a river bank. They go to the nation. And over there, the body is left half gone. And then the body is left half gone. Okay. okay. So, mostly, the pie dog is a stray dog. Yes. A stray dog is called a pie dog. So, in these cremation places, you have all these dogs because they know they'll be left over of the human flesh. Okay, so there would be these scavengers around. So, uh, this mother crocodile used to be there near the, what would it be its food? Uh, this paragraph is on the food of the crocodile. So, first it would be mostly on fish. If not fish, deer, monkeys. Deer come to these riverbanks to drink water, no? So, that would be its prey. Monkeys that came to drink, perhaps a duck or two. And sometimes... Pie dog full of parasites or a skeleton cow. Skeleton cow means a rotten uh, leftover of cow. Skeleton. And sometimes he went down to the burning hearts and found the half burned bodies of the Indians passing in the street. So it would not be perhaps it would be traveling up and down the river. Wherever there was a burning heart, it would go there and maybe have whenever it would get food. But that was the food of the that's smuggled okay. This, okay, who's going to read? Beside the shows, as he lay waiting, there was a blue gem. It was not a gem, though. It was a sand bone glass that had been rolling about in the river for a long time. By chance, it was perforated right through the neck of a bottle, perhaps a blue bead. So this is where we come... To the okay. The name of the chapter is Blue right? So here we get the mention of the blue. So what was it? It was not a gem. The bead was not really a gem or a precious stone. What was it? It was a sand bowl glass, which was there on the banks of the river. And somehow there was a perforation. You know how a bead looks like you have done all that art and craft when you were younger still, no? You remember those white colored beads which would have one you know, ear and one over here, and you would have to pierce it and make some necklace or whatever. So beads are the ones which are sort of roundish and they have these two you know extreme edges where holes where they put the thread and make it into a necklace card for. So somehow this gem, which was a blue bead, had this perforations right at the sides or the ends of the so that's how it looks like a yeah. Who will continue? In the shrill noisy village, a coach of fall out of a mud house, the same color as the ground, came a little girl. A thin, starveling child dressed in a earth colored rag. She had torn the rag into two to make a shirt, skirt, and a sock. Read on the next paragraph as well. Sylvia was eating the last of her meal. Chapati, this Chapati, okay, Chapati is married in English. No? Chapati wrapped around a smear of green chili and rancid butter, and she divided this also to make it seem more, and by did it showing straight white thing. So now we have come, so first the last paragraph we came upon Louis. Now we came come upon the protagonist of the story. Who is the protagonist? So, here we have presented a shrill, noisy village coming above the fort. What is a fort? A fort is a place or a location between two mountains and a river. That's called a fort. 
So mountains here, there are mountains and there and forests here, and there is a river here. So this type of setting is called the So this village was this uh, about the fort out of a mud house, the same color as the ground. Came as he curled. What is the same color of the ground? So what would be the color? Brown. Brown. Brownish. So Shivasibya was had a brownish complexion and a thin starling child. What do you mean by starling? Of course, one was star. One was star. One doesn't have enough to eat. So came a thin starling child dressed in earth colored rag. Yes. Yes, brown colored rag. What is a rag? To store clothes. Store clothes is called the rag. So you are presented, now you have to imagine Sibya in your head. Alright? So she is this little girl, she is thin, she is starving. So maybe her bones and all are all out and she doesn't have much muscles. And then she is wearing this earth colored wrap sort of, not a very proper dress. And she had torn the track to, into two. So she was given this one piece of cloth which she made into two. One she made it as a skirt and other was a sack. Okay, so she wore a skirt and above it she wore a sack. So from that one piece of cloth that she had. Sibia was eating the last of her meal. Chapati wrapped round a smear of green chili and rancid butter. Chapati we all know. Smear of red, green chili. Smear means spread. Rancid butter. What's rancid butter? Shall I just release this? Rancid means sour. Okay. So the butter was also not fresh. The butter was rancid or it was sour. And that was the last of her meal and that she divided this also to make it seem more. So what does it mean? Suppose you have one roll of chapati and then you divide it into two. Then you feel, oh I have two chapatis. If you have just one roll, you feel I'm having only one. And if you divide it, then you say, okay, this is one meal, this is the second meal, this is the third meal. So that it seemed more, she divided even that one roll of chapati, which was smeared with just with green chili and rancid. So what have we presented over here? We have presented the economic condition of the child that she came from a poor family. Okay? So from we come to know that from three things. What are those three things? Uh, one is that uh, she was wearing a uh, colored like rag. She was wearing rags, uh, which she had also made into two. Yeah, and she Second, was eating a, a, let's say, a last meal and she had divided the chapati using that sour And one more. Second, the last meal. Second, the last meal. The last of her meal. The last of her meal. The last of her meal. One more children, one more. Second, the very thin starling child. She was presented as a thin starling child. So three things from here present the economic condition of the book. Okay. Child, who's going to speak next? With her ebony hair and grey eyes, and no skin of white from the tree, she was a happy and mature child when you about 12 years old. Barefoot, of course, and often Lucy gold or mid the morning and born to go we can't do that. In all her life, she had never owned anything but a rag. She had never owned even one anna. Anna, anna. anna. And then we become <laughs> brother. <laughs> not twice, not a pie. Even by, say, a handful of blown glass beads from that one stall in the bazaar where there were pine like stars, or one of the thin glass candles that the man kept on the stick. And you should choose which color you have. Okay. So with her ebony hair. So now we have description, physical description of hers. So she had ebony hair. Ebony means what color? Black. No. Black. Ebony black. would be something around this curtain. Black. Reddish brown. Okay. Ebony is somewhat reddish brown. 
Okay, and had great eyes, means big eyes. And the skin of oil, brown, clean. Now remember, she was brown in color, right? And but she had nice, uh, she had oil, oily complexion. Yes. She was a happy, immature child woman. What do you mean by child woman? A child who is almost almost is going is on the fringes of being a woman. So though she's only 12 years old, but you know, people are the children are in these villages who who toil a lot. Work harder. They become, yeah, they grow faster. Okay. They become, though it is immature, she was about to believe, become a woman because she used to do all the work of a woman. After later, I will see from the moment she was born, she did almost all work that a woman of the household would. So that is why, but then, however, even though she worked hard, she was a happy child. Okay. Happy, immature because she's a child, so she is immature. A uh, woman about 12 years old. Barefoot, of course, and then boozy cold on a winter morning. Barefoot, obviously, because she was poor, she couldn't afford a pair of shoes or anything. And boozy cold on a winter morning. Boozy cold means? Uh, very cold. Very cold does what when you are not very well kept? Yes? Bumps, something to do with nose? Sneezing. Sneezing, running nose. Okay. So there would be this girl, she would be having a you know, boozy nose or in a, in a cold she would have a running nose. And she was born to joy. So because she was a girl of the jungle, she was born and born into a poor family. So she was born to work hard. Joy means hard work. All right. Who else? Okay. She knew what finally was told. Oh, I did, I didn't explain this. Just, just sorry. Uh, she had never owned anything but a rag. She had never owned even one ana, not a pie, not a pack. So that means she never had any money with herself. She did not have anything to call her own except the dress that she was wearing. Anna is a currency. Eight. Eight. Pesa? Yes. Now we don't have the concept of Pesa at all. Earlier we would have, I, I myself have, I have seen 10 Pesa. So earlier we would have that Pesa. That Pesa is 50 Pesa is a better version of that. Now you don't have 50 Pesa also. It's gone to lowest denomination is 1. Yes. one. Earlier we would have 25 Pesa. 50 pesa and 1 And here this Anna was even smaller denomination than the Pais and Pai means money. So she did not have any money to buy anything. Not even a, a handful of blown glass, glass beads from the stall in the bazaar where they were piled like stars on the thin bangles. If you have seen bangle sellers, you will see, or if you go to these jewelry shops, you'll find them all, you know, kept on top of each other, so they and they shine, they sparkle, so they look like stars. And for a young child, that presents a very tempting sight. And she wanted it, but she did not have any money to buy it. And you could choose which color you would have. Okay, now you need. She knew what finally was true. She had been with her parents and brother all through the jungle to the little town at the railhead where there was this bazaar. And she had walked through all the milling people and the dogs and monkeys full of fleas. The idling, gossiping, bargaining humanity, spitting little juice, heard the bell of a scared bull. No, scared or sacred. A sacred bull clunking. As he lumped along through the dust and hubbub. So even though she did not have money to buy, she knew what finery was. Finery was means what fine, fine. exquisite things were. She had an idea of it. And how did she get an idea? Obviously, her house did not have any fine things. She, because she was like a she was poor because she saw others dressing fine. She used to go to 
to the bazaar. She used to go to the bazaar. Okay. She used to frequent or she used to visit this bazaar where all these were on display. So from there only she came to know about the existence of these uh, fine beautiful things. And she had been there with her brother and her parents. And this was somewhere near the railhead. That is where the railway station is. Most of you have the bazaar over there. And we walked through all the milling people. What do you know by milling? What is the meaning of milling people? Obvious would be mills where you are going to go, but not really so. Think, think, think of a bazaar. Shopkeeper. No. Not score people. Numbers. Imagine the number. It's got to do with numbers. Oh, Milling crowd. people with crowd. Or crowd. Oh. Milling people means crowd of people. So there would be the smelling people and the dogs and monkeys full of fleas. The idling, gossiping, bargaining humanity. So again, this is a this is a description of if you go to any of the bazaars, even over here, if you go to the sector 17 market, no, sector 9 market, if you go to Avashi, in the evening, you will be getting the same spectacle like this. So people are you know, going in boards together, you know, bargaining on the street side, you know, from the street side shops. And they will be gossiping with each other, talking loudly with each other. So this is the kind of spectacle you get to see when you are in a restaurant. Uh, this bargaining humanity spinning beetle juice. Beetle juice is? Beetle beet is what? Beet Not beetle juice. Beetle means pan. Beetle means pan. Okay. Yeah. Beetle means pan. When you chew, what you get is the beetle And you cannot, you know, swallow it, but spit it out. Beetle juice is pan. Comedic. No. 
commission very close commission this is shan right commotion commotion
green color, pista color, they say. Pista yeah. is green color. If they say it is um, something to do with orange, it's going to be orange color, saffron. Yes. So like that. If it's anjeer, it's going to be magenta or addition color. Yes, it is also. What is a wild? Wild honey means honey that is not filtered. And they break the hive. And directly from the hive, the, the honey that they get, it is not purified. That, that contains wax. The kind of honey we have is de wax. The wax is taken out from the honey. But wild honey is when the wax is there in the honey. So just directly they, uh, they break the hive and they get the honey. That is why. But these sweets were more interesting than obviously sugarcane and uh, wild honey because they were colorful. Okay, so somebody read. Then there was a, then what, there was the cloth stall. Cloth stall. Cloth stall, stacked with great rolls of new cotton cloth, stamped at the edge with a maker's sign for Tiger's head, and smelling so wonderful, smelling so wonderful of his dressing, straight front of the bridge that Sibia could have stood by it all day. You did a lot. But there were other wonders to see. Satin sewn, uh, satin sewn with real silver thread. A tin tray from Birmingham and a sari Birmingham. 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 <laughs> and a sari which had got chips of looking glass embroidered, uh, embroidered into the border. She joined the crowd round a Kashmiri traveling merchant uh, on his way to the bungalows. Uh, he was showing the he was showing dawn colored silks that poured like cream, and he got a little lock chest with turquoise and purple in it. Best of all, the uh, a box which when you pressed it, a bell tinkled and a yellow wooden chicken jumped out. Okay, right. So, so apart from last time, last time we did was a description of the sweet stock, right? Now we have the cloth stock. So the cloths are with great rolls of new cotton cloth. If you have been to any of the wholesalers, these shops, you would find they have these big rolls. From there, they cut the amount of you know uh, cloth that you require. So everything is not pretty. Sometimes they just give you the piece. So there will be this you know big rolls of cloth, and you know the maker's logo would be stamped at the end of the of that roll, and that would have a wonderful smell as well. Smelling so wonderful of his dressing straight from the bells. If you just like you have new, uh, take out new shoes, it has a smell. You take out new books, it has a smell. Even, you know, cloth or dress, if you take them out right from the mills, it has a kind of a distinct smell. But there were other wonders as well. And what were they? They were satin sewn with real silver thread. So this was exquisite finery. She was saying no, that she knew finally, so this was finally washed. She could see satin dresses sewn with real silver threads and they were embroidered and embroidered means and stitched at the corners. And then she joined the crown and then Kashmiri traveling merchants. If you have seen Kashmiris, they bring wonderful cloth. Okay, so they bring carpets, they bring pashmina shawls, and very beautiful ones. They bring these satins. And this uh, Kashmiri was showing a dawn colored cells. What do you mean by dawn colored? Dark. Oh, that's the opposite. Light. 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 At the time, is it uh, at the time of dawn? What's the word? Light. 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 light color. So, so dawn color means light color. Okay, and then he got a little locked chest. What's a chest? Box. You have those lids like this. Okay, that's a chest. So he had these box, which was a, a chest, and it had uh, turquoises and opals, and it is covered with gems. Precious. Precious gems. First of all, for this. Sibia, 
was a box which when he pressed it bell tinkled and a yellow wooden chick jumped up you have seen often now you have these boxes and yeah. you want to play a prank and you just open the box and out comes some jumps out yeah, jumping jack you jump jump. see some so because she was young she was just 12 years old and she liked this the best of
And obviously, they would answer. They wouldn't do without. But something was too something. Something was not enough. Would be a bare living for their sustenance. <coughs> <coughs> yes. Yeah. Such thoughts did not trouble Sylvia. However, as she skipped along with a sickle like so many people beside her mother, you could skip on the way out, but not on the way back when you ate with tiredness and there was a great load to carry. Some of the women were very reckless. The women were very reckless, made out of lalal. Beaches. Lalal beaches. Beach means beaches. Comes from the word beach. Beach means sea. Okay. Lalal beaches. The shiny scar uh, scarlet seeds, black one, and that grew everywhere in the jungle. It was best to have new necklaces each year instead of last year's faded ones. And Sylvia was making one too. How nice it was going to be to hear that. A rattling swish round her neck as she brushed along with lots of necklaces. But each seed hard as stone had to be drilled with a red hot needle, and the family needle was black, so she must wait till they could buy another. Sorry. What was that? The food design is being made, and what is the source of imagination? <laughs> okay. So some of these women, know before that, she uh, such thoughts did not trouble Sylvia. Which thoughts did not trouble Sylvia? Uh, not getting enough money. Yeah. Not getting enough money, or somebody else getting more money for their efforts that has been taken. All that she did. She was just a twelve-year-old, younger period. Much younger. Now it says that uh, what did they uh, carry with them? They carried a sickle and a homemade day for. How does a sickle look like? Uh, and a hay fork? Like a fog. Like a trident. Trident would be three. And what would be two? A fork only. If it's a trident, there would be a fork. So, a fork is just two. So, they would be ha having this a fork. You could also have a type called three one as well. But here it is a two edge. Two end. <coughs> okay. So, that is they would carry. And she said that you could skip on your way up. Because you would not be carrying the load of the grasses. But could you skip the way down? No, because they would be carrying the load on there. Back, so it wouldn't be easy to skip the way. Some of the women were wearing necklaces made up of these lal lal beaches. So from the seeds, they made these necklaces made up of seeds. Scarlet is red, right? <coughs> the color of scarlet is red. And red necklaces look very attractive, isn't it? So these women would make these, take these beaches and they would make holes in it. Beach, normally a seed doesn't have a hole on either side. Like this. Does it have? No. So what they do is they take the beach and with a hot iron needle, they pierce it from ear to ear. So then we have these two openings and a path inside. But then for that, the needle has to be really red hot. But then uh, for her, it was not possible why? because this needle had been snapped. That is broken. Until they got a new needle, she couldn't make any. Next is for us. But the other women go away. <coughs> and see, is it best to have new necklaces each year instead of the last year's faded ones? Now, seeds are going to, the color is going to fade over time, isn't it? It's natural. It is not uh, you know, artificial that is going to stay off. With passing of time, the color fades. But then every year they would be able to you know, get another, make another new seed for it. <coughs> But she would like to hear the necklaces, you know, they with the beaches and this, uh, they make a lot of sound. While you walk around, they swish and frouch is all the sound that is made when the children or women wear jewelry. Each seed, how the stone had to be drilled with that sound. Alright, read along. Well, somebody has, you have not read it out. Oh, 
for the strings and strings of glass and beads, anchor theorems, nose rings, bangles, or the body stars of the bazaar, or her little golden body decorated. That is it. Chattering as they went, the women followed the dusty track toward the river. On their way, they passed a guja encampment. Encampment of grass huts where these nomadic graziers graziers would live for a time until the animals had relaxed, finished, or easy grazing within reach. Or they were not able to sell enough of their white butter and white milk in the district. <coughs> or there was no one to buy the young male buffalo for. So I will wait. Okay, so now we come to the gujars. All right. So these gujars started as when the women followed the dusty track towards the river, and they passed a gujar encampment. Who were the gujars? Gujars were the nomadic graziers. So what's a nomadic grazier? Nomadic means when they don't have a permanent place, they travel from one place to another. And grazier, the ones who graze cattle. Okay, so their occupation is dependent upon their cattle. So their cattle rearers. Okay, animal graziers. They graze the animal and they sell the animal products in the market, and that is how they get their money. And so long as the cattle is there and the milk is selling in the market, or maybe the cattle is being used as a bait for catching tigers. We are there at one place. Catching tigers. Yeah. We have these goats. You know, earlier when the hunters used to go to, you know, for hunting, they would take goats <coughs> and they would tie together them to a tree, and that and they would sit on a machan. The hunters would go and on a tree top they would make these platforms called machans, and they would stand there and keep looking at the goat. But when the tiger would come to eat the goat, that is when the hunters would fire. So the animals were kept as bait for the tigers to kill the tigers. Okay. So and in those times there were hunters who would come, and these animals, whether it's a, it could be a buffalo also, it could be a cow also, it could be a goat also, any animal. Or maybe the ones you know they become old and they no longer give milk, or they become sick, then they use them as tiger. And they get money from it. The hunters pay money for using the animal as a prey. So, so long as they got money from these animals, they stayed at one place. The moment that was done, they would then go to another place and do the same. So, that is why they were nomadic. They were, and they lived in these camps, temporary tents they would make and stay. That's why it's called an encampment. <clears throat> or perhaps a cattle killing tiger was making a nuisance of himself, then they would move on. So apart from the three, uh, that they were the, their uh, products would not sell, or their uh, animals would stop becoming a place, or maybe that place was being attacked by hunters, right. cattle killing tigers. So sometimes we just like we have man eaters. Tigers who turn man eaters, like that, there are tigers who kill cattle. Okay. They know where the cattle are and they come onto the periphery or the fringe of that village and they come and carry the cattle off. That is by tigers who can no longer hunt wild animals. To hunt wild animals, you have to be really swift and agile. Okay, only then you can run behind and catch another wild animal of prey. Whereas domesticated animals are Slow, right? They're mostly tethered at one place, standing at one place, sitting, standing under the tree and grazing at leisure. So they're easy prey. So that is why sometimes these tigers, when they grow old, they become cattle killers. And so if these uh, tigers come to kill, uh, to kill the cattle, then they can no longer stay there because their money comes from the cattle. If the cattle is being carried off by a tiger every now and then, then they will leave that place at Okay. Yeah, who will be? 
Divya glanced at the Bajaj woman as she went past. They wore trousers tight and brindled at the ankles, and in their ears, last silver rings made out of metal tissue. And one of them was clicking a stick against a big brass brass in which they fetched water from the river for all the cat to see which ones were empty. The men and boys were out of the camp just now with the herd or gone to the bazaar to sell produce. But one or two buffaloes were standing about, creatures of great creatures, creatures of great wet noses and moving jaws and gaunt black teeth. So Sylvia glanced at the Gujar women as she went past. And uh, what is their attire? How are their attire, children? Tight. Okay. Printed at the ankles. Okay. They wore trousers tight and wrinkled at the ankles. Okay. They wore like this. Flats. Uh. If you are able to see my pant, uh, it is wrinkled at the ankles. They are wearing trousers. And it, but it is it is to be tied on top and at the anchors it is it would have these things. Okay. Tied. Tied and wrinkled at the anchors and in the ears large silver rings melt up, melted rupees. Where have you seen such women? Thinking, yes. Village, yes. And more so which kind of village? <laughs> no, have you have you seen the uh, tribal women, or if you have seen the have you seen uh, African women? Yeah. yeah. The, uh, have you seen the pygmies? No. 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 Have pygmies you seen the Somalis? The Somalis. If you have no, these South African Sudanese women, so these mostly the South African women no, belonging to the tribes, they wear this huge, big, big melted. Uh, they are actually uh, coins. Okay, they are coins, they melt it and they wear it around their ears. Have you seen the silver coin? Yes, Wakanda forever. Wakanda no? forever. Wakanda forever. So from there they were like this and they had these brass gulas. Give me a minute. Brass gula, what is a gula? Gula is an earthen pot. Okay. So guras look like this. Yeah, these they have these long necks and they have these brass guras, they would take it to the river and they would get fetch water in the guras and Okay, all right, so take your break and then we will defend. Okay. Yeah, I'm you not the description. Yes, we are yet to come. I had warned you. Four warned. All right, I'll come in. Yes. You don't have to go to the shots. Me, shots, and all that.